Okay, we're going to try something together that mankind has kind of wondered about and maybe some people actually were hoping that one day we would be able to see the future. So let's give it a try with this uh, card effect because, you know, if we, if we have something random occur, but yet we're able to predict it, we're able to see it clearly and accurately predict what happens, uh, that's pretty darn amazing, okay? So I have this highly shuffled deck of cards. We actually don't need the entire deck for this, and it would just be a lot of cards to work with. So I'm going to uh, kind of riffle down the side of this deck until you tell me to stop, and then we'll throw out some of the cards because we just don't need them all. So you tell me when to stop. Stop. Okay, we'll get rid of those. So we still have, oh, I don't know, a good uh, third of the deck or so. So we're going to deal these cards into two piles. Okay. And you have to realize that the cards here, well, I, I shuffled the deck, I don't know how many times while talking to you. And then you decided on which ones to throw away and which ones to keep. And now we've done this left-right shuffle, and so why don't we even just kind of randomize these cards further. We'll deal these out into two piles. So we'll have a total of four, four piles here. Okay. So we have four piles that we're looking at. Let me just move this over uh, because a prediction was actually written before we started. Uh, it's been in plain view the whole time. It's over here. And um, the prediction is, what is the prediction anyway? Let's see. You will reveal, let's see if you can see it here. Um, and maybe not there either. You will reveal the four aces. And what do you mean reveal? Uh, let's see. Re reveal the uh, well. <laughs> we didn't get all four if we got three of them. Uh, I, that's a fail, a <laughs> third fail, and a fourth fail. The only thing we got that maybe is kind of nice is we got a couple of queens of the same color. So that, that's kind of nice. Uh, I'm sorry to say that is a fail. That There's no way that we could attribute this to anyone seeing the few. Uh, I don't know why. Normally when you use a dash, it means it's something kind of follows it, is there's, but you'll need to flip the piles? Flip which piles? Oh, oh, these piles? No. No way. No. How in the world? Let's see. There's no way. We got, oh man, we got three aces. We got all four aces. How in the world? Is that what? You will reveal the four aces. We did indeed. We just needed to understand how we would reveal them. Okay, great. So that is the performance with a subpar acting. So you're probably a better actor than I am. And so you'll be able to uh, dress this up uh, a bit more... Uh, interestingly. Okay, so let's just talk about you know, this effect. It's not uh, too difficult to see what's going on with this. Um, it's very much in line with these other effects that we've been doing where we talk about seeing into the future. Uh, the key really is to just be able to, in your mind's eye, kind of follow on the movement of cards from the top to the bottom or from the bottom to the top um, or and back you know moving cards from the top to the bottom and then top again that kind of thing um, especially when we're dealing them out you were dealing them out into piles well when you deal cards out it reverses their order well if you deal them out again it reverses that reversing right so in mathematics, we would say that's the identity. That's kind of a, like a group element of order two. If you perform it twice, 
you get back to where you started. So that's a mathematical concept, of course, performing an action twice that returns you back to the original state. And that kind of thing is happening here. Now, there's a, a you, you would not have to use the four aces, actually. You could use any, any four cards. In fact, one thing I thought of that you could do, so I, so I started with the four aces, of course. I mean, that's what gives it away there. Bottom four cards. They started here. Uh, maybe just for fun, why don't we do a little bit differently? And then the explanation I'll give you um, will still work. Now, the advantage, the advantage to doing it the way I'm going to show you now is with those four aces at the bottom, I had to make sure they stayed on the bottom throughout the shuffling. Okay, and in some of my other videos, we talk about um, uh, preserving the bottom stock. Uh, bottom stock just means a certain number of cards are kept where they are, right? Well, to do that with the riffle shuffle, what that means is I need to make sure, see these are the bottom cards right here, I need to make sure at least four of those fall before I have the right hand, before, yeah, before the right hand cards fall. And that would preserve whatever's on the bottom, okay? Well, four cards to preserve at the bottom, believe it or not, is starting to get to be a bit much and not have it detectable. Um, so anyway, that that's, explains all of the shuffling. Uh, I was just making sure that on the left, the, the, this half here, uh, I had at least four cards falling first, okay? Now, if you want to avoid that and you want to go with more of a impromptu, kind of impromptu, true random deck performance, let, let's go ahead and show you that uh, because it's going to involve the same steps that we needed for this original one. So what you do is you have the spectator freely mix this deck, okay? and then they just hand it to you, just hand it to you, and you explain to them that you're going to choose four prediction cards. Four prediction cards. So now what you're going to do is you're going to make note of the bottom four cards is what you're going to do, okay? Now it can happen that, um, you know, if we're wanting companion cards like the two of spades, the seven of clubs, oh, it's already here. So in this case, um, you know, you have to kind of improvise. You never know what's down here. Um, so if you go ahead and find the, as your prediction card, uh, two of spades, and then go ahead and find the other two sevens. That will be super surprising. And then find the nine of hearts. Okay, so you leave those down there, and then you go through, and so just remember, we're finding the companion cards to the uh, black two, and then red nine, and then the uh, red sevens. So black two, red nine. So, yeah, you, know, you don't show the spectator. You kind of hold them like this. Uh, black two, uh, red nine. Okay, black two. So I'm just I'd hold them like this. Black two. You know, hmm, that's a good one. Two. Oh, there's that oh, one of the red sevens, by the way. And I'd like to red nine. There you go. And then if I'm not mistaken, you probably saw it as well. There's the other uh, red seven. So you set those down. Very good. So these will be your, now it's four prediction cards. Okay. Ooh, that's a big number to be working with here. Uh, but they correspond to the four cards at the bottom. Okay, so, so they're either companion cards or they're cards that complete the entire set of cards of a certain value. Okay, very good. Now, you, what you could do here is if you've watched some of my other scenes to the future, there's a number of ways to kind of branch off from here. Um, if you want to, so you have to realize the... Um, Spectator shuffled the deck in this particular rendition. So it might be helpful to not upset the order of these, right? So we've just pulled out uh, four prediction cards and to not like mix these further. Now, if you want to mix them, you'll have to do the same thing that I needed to do before where 
you riffle shuffle in a way that you leave those four cards where they are. Well, that's a bit dangerous, I think. So it might be safer to go this route and explain to the spectator and say, okay, well, you shuffled the deck and then I simply chose four prediction cards and I didn't change the order of any of these. So you, you sell that as a, a positive, a selling point. You know, you'd make a big deal about how I didn't change the order that you put them in, okay? And now you explain, well, we don't need all of these cards. It's just too many to work with. So you tell me when to stop. And this genuinely is a, a free choice here, which is powerful, right? Because they're deciding like, you know, which cards really and how many uh, we're going to work with. So you go like this until they say stop. And then you just set them aside. These are, you know, discard cards over here. I'll just push them off to the side. And then you just, you know, begin dealing them into a left and right pile. Well, just think about what's going to happen. Those bottom four cards, where will they land? Well, they're going to, two of them will land on each pile, right? Two of them will land on the top of each pile. There you go, right? That's where they're going to land. Well, what did I do in the original performance? I said, well, to really scramble these things, and you can now point out the fact that you have four prediction cards, so you need four piles to work with. You would just deal these out into two piles each. Well, two times two is four, so you'll get a total of four piles. But, you know, think, well, where are those... Where are the, the special cards now? Are they on the top of these piles or are they on the bottom? Well, they were on top, right? We had two of them on top of each of those two piles just a moment ago. And then we dealt each pile into two piles. Well, that moves them to the bottom, right? Moves them to the bottom. So there's like the two of clubs and so forth. Okay, and then if you use the same approach that I did, you can say, hmm, well, you, I, I suppose you could show, the, there's so many choices here, it's hard to know which one to show you. Uh, you could go ahead and kind of show the uh, prediction cards and go, well, here, here, are the, here are the prediction cards that I had. Well, what are the chances that these match those in some, oh no, that's a fail. <laughs> no, there's no jacks over here, nor is there an ace, nor is there a five. That is a big, fat fail. And then you can either show a flash of inspiration or recollection and go, oh, wait a second, wait a second. When I was kind of seeing the future, I, I wasn't actually seeing these cards. I was seeing the cards on the bottom. Yeah, 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 that's what it was. You know, my whole world was like flipped upside down in that quick little vision of the future. Yeah, that's right. I was seeing things from underneath. That's what I was seeing. And then you can just point out that you've, you know, you've found a very remarkable collection of cards. You found the other two sevens super unlikely <laughs> and then you found the companion cards for the other two okay now if we had not had two companion cards here these would have all been different values which would have been great in some ways maybe it would have been better because this is a little confusing because of that but you never know what you're stuck with after the Spectator freely mixes the deck, and so you kind of have to be aware of a few different contingencies that can happen, like this can happen right here. So, um, so anyway, that is um, a performance of See Into the Future, where we're using the bottom four cards, and it, it uses something called a miscall, by the way, that's some vocabulary. A miscall is where um, supposedly you messed up. Your prediction did not come about. Your prediction appears to be wrong. Right? It appears to be wrong. And then, kind of like I did with the piece of paper, I brought it out and I said, oh, but you'll need to flip the piles. Um, and then it comes to the rescue and then you nail it. That's, 
that's just a fun way to kind of throw the spectator off that you've messed up and then suddenly, wham, you come down with a kind of a killer ending that no, you didn't mess up at all, you nailed it. So anyway, that's a, a fun performance there. And so the, the main difference here is that you're, uh, you're dealing out into two piles and then two piles again. So when you, if we had just dealt into two piles, the cards of interest would be on the top of those. Now, if you deal each of those two piles into two, it moves it to the bottom. So kind of mathematically speaking, you just have to keep track of, okay, top, bottom, top, bottom. And, you know, when you perform a reverse counting twice, it brings you back to, you know, where the cards were because the cards actually began on the bottom. That's how they landed here in the end. They're on the bottom of these piles, not the top. So anyway, that's a fun one. Uh, that doesn't have too many steps to it, and um, it it can you know this doing it the way that I've just shown you here, you can avoid having to um, uh, shuffle the cards and try to uh, retain the bottom stock of four cards because that can be that can be a bit tricky and even the best of magicians can mess that up. Anyway, that's a fun one um, involving uh, four. Four cards there.